Good day, everyone. To our respected panel members, Ma'am Hazel Rebolio and Sir Mark John Pakal, and our research advisor, Sir Jammer Alimbon, we will now be presenting the results and discussion of our study entitled Species Composition, Structural Characteristics, and Perceived Ecosystem Services of Mangroves in Coastal Areas of Mabini, Davao, de Oro, Philippines. Mangroves are systematic assemblages of wood plant population that coexist with random angiosperm families that exhibit unique adaptation to saline environment. Numerous studies indicate that determining species composition through the use of biodiversity assessment tools and evaluating structural characteristics of mangrove communities are critical and relevant to society because they provide information that enables people to understand why these ecosystems must be protected and preserved. The mangroves ecosystem is one of the essential ecosystems in tropical countries. It has diverse, namely provisioning, habitat, and regulating services. Sandilian in Kateristan 2012 noted that the decline of mangrove ecosystem being diverse genetic and biological storehouses causes irreparable damage to ecosystem service to local communities. However, local communities sometimes overlook this aspect because of rigorous urbanization and commercially driven development. In the Philippines, Mangawang and Flores 2017 noted that the depletion of mangroves ecosystem was due to residents' negligence in the implemented conservation policies and mangrove, on mangroves despite them being aware of the importance of mangroves in the coastal and marine ecosystems. In Davao region, a decrease in mangrove extent was observed. This decrease can be attributed to several reasons such as land reclamation, conversion of mangrove forest to piers, housing, and aquaculture farms, timber harvesting, and residential and urban development. Rationale. The assessment of mangrove species more precisely, the habitat and existing species in mangrove regions is crucial for the conservation and protection of mangrove forests and management planning for, for the specific mangrove area, according to Canizares and Serona 2016 and Tucker et al. 2015. However, there is limited published information concerning the mangrove's existence existing in the coastal areas of Mabini, Davao de Oro, despite the proclamation of the President of the Philippines declaring it as one of the protected landscape and seascape. With this existing gap, the study consequently aims to identify and describe mangrove species, determining the mangrove structural characteristics and determining the local community's perception of the ecosystem services of mangroves in the coastal areas of Mabini, Davao, the Oro, Philippines. The findings of this study will serve as baseline data on various characteristics of mangroves in the area. Also, it enriches the existing knowledge of mangrove ecosystem status along Davao Gulf. To be more specific, this study aims to identify and describe the mangrove species in terms of frequency, density, basal area, relative frequency, relative density, relative dominance, and importance value. Second, determine the structural characteristics of the mangroves in terms of diameter at breast height, basal area, density, species diversity, species richness, and species evenness. 
Third and lastly, to determine the local community's perception of the ecosystem services of the mangroves in the coastal areas of Mabini Davao de Oro, Philippines. In this study, assessment of the mangrove species will be a great deal in the biological of the study zone and the site species coordinating with the purpose of reforestation and insurance of the forest. This study, the results and findings will be beneficial to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DENR, local government, government unit of Mabini Davao de Oro, and as well as the offices concerned with the protection and conservation of the mangroves in the coastal areas, the local community of Mabini Davao de Oro, to students in the field of environmental science and future researchers regarding this topic. This study was conducted in the coastal areas of the municipality of Mabini Davao de Oro, Philippines. The coastal areas of this municipality is along the Davao Gulf, which is known for the abundance of its marine and coastal resources that includes mangroves and coral reefs. However, due to the heightened local restrictions in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the assessment of the mangroves was conducted in four out of six coastal barangays, specifically on Barangay Quambog, Barangay Del Pilar, Barangay San Antonio, and Barangay Pindasan. This study aims to gather data on both the ecological and social aspect of the study area. Thus, the researchers employed both quant quantitative and qualitative approaches to attain the specified object objectives. For the quantitative data collection, necessary permissions and clearances were secured before conducting the field work to identify species composition and describe the stand characteristics of the mangrove community, the protocol as established in the Manual on Biodiversity Assessment and Monitoring System for Terrestrial Ecosystems was followed. For the identifications of the species, the Field Guide to the Philippine Mangroves and the Field Guide to Mangrove Identification and Community Structure Analysis were used. <clears throat> Characteristics of mangroves were analyzed using Microsoft Excel Office 365. The parameters considered were frequency, density, relative frequency, relative density, relative dominance, and importance values. These were calculated using mathematical formulas by English et al. 1997. Further, biodiversity indices were determined using paleontologic Paleontological Statistics Software, or PASS, by Hammer et al. 2001. The values for the Shannon Wiener, Margalef, and Pilu indices were used to describe the diversity, richness, and evenness of mangrove stands, respectively. For the qualitative approach, before qualitative data gathering, permissions for from the LGU Mabini and the concerned barangays, the smallest administrative units in the Philippines, were secured. Upon approval, the researchers communicated with the purposely sampled participants, seven for the FGD and seven for the IDI, and distributed to each of them the informed consent. Google Meet platform was utilized in observance of the safety protocols during the COVID-19 pandemic. The research participants were selected according to the criteria that include, number one, should be residing in the coastal areas of Mabili, number two, should have or had access to the mangroves, and three, should be 15 to 65 years old. To commence this part, participant statements regarding the ecosystem services of mangroves in the study site were organized using the ecosystem services matrix. Afterward, the researchers employed a series of steps presented by Miles et al. 2014, including data reduction, data display, and conclusion drawing and verification. Further, this study used the thematic analysis in analyzing the data. 
the main thrust is to establish common theme, common themes, patterns, terms, or ideas that can inform a deeper understanding of the issue surrounding the research problem while articulating a detailed description of the ecosystem services of the mangroves in the coastal areas of Mabini, Davao de Oro, Philippines. At this point, we will present the results and discussion of the study. So this table shows the species distribution of mangroves in four sampling sites in Mabini, Davao de Oro. A total of eight species were identified in the four study sites. These identified species are classified under six, six genera of five families, Rhizophoraceae, Sonerathiaceae, Avencinaceae, Acanthaceae, and Mercinaceae. The table also shows the number of individuals identified in each barangays. 314 individuals in Pindasan, 708 individuals in San Antonio, 266 individuals in Del Pilar, and 179 individuals in Pombong. The result shows, showed that among all the species identified in Mabini Davao de Oro, the most abundant is Rhizophora apicolata blue, with a, a total of 933 individuals, and followed by Rhizophora macronata lamb at 248 individuals. Both species belong to the family Rhizophoraceae. Sonerathea alba, belonging to the family Sonerathiaceae, logged 207 individuals and Brigera sexwangela, lower four, belonging to the family Rhizophoraceae, registered 31 individuals. They were then followed by Avicennia officinalis, lean, at 18 individuals and Avicennia rompania, hub, at 15 individuals belonging to the family Avicennia sea. Acanthus ebraxiatus pol, a mangrove associate belonging to the family Acanthaceae, registered 13 individuals. The least abundant species, Egeceras cornicolatum blanco, belonging to the family Mercinaceae, only log two individuals. Now we're going to proceed to species composition. Rhizopora apicolata or bakaulahi, showing the morphological characteristics from growth form, leaf morphology, tree root, tree fruit, and inflorescence was observed in the study site. This species is locally named bakaulahi. This species is an evergreen tree that can reach up to 40 centimeter in its trunk and it grow, it grow up to 30 centimeter tall, characterized further by prop roots that can reach up to five, five meters and leaves are characterized by elliptic smooth dark leaves which, with reddish leaf stalks. It, it's flow of sepals. Furthermore, its brown is between 22 to 26 centimeter long and mm -hmm. thrives mostly on soft, deep, muddy soils with substantial water input. Our picolata accounts 63.60% of the in the surveys of Davao de Oro. This record is comparably higher than in than those records in Vanishing Island Samal, Hagonay Davao del Sur, Banibanay Davao Oriental, Santa Cruz Davao del Sur, and Panabo Davao de, del Norte. Moreover, compared to Pina, Pinabakdao Samar and Mualboal Cebu, our picolata percentage in Mabini Davao de, or, de Oro is still relatively higher. However, the said species were found lower 
than the record in Pujada Bay, Mapi, Davao Oriental. Next is Rhizopora mokornata, an evergreen tree known by the locals as Bakau Babae, has rough grayish to colored bark, bra to brown colored bark, heights up to 20 to 25 centimeter, and could reach up to 8 to 20 centimeter in diameter. It has leathery elliptic upward arrangement. In contrast, it has a yellow to light of green stipules and pedulous flowers shown in figure 2E with long warty propagules. These species mostly thrive in seaward side of the intertidal zone and are associated with soft muds of estuarine rivers and tidal creeks. Moreover, Mokornata tallied the second highest frequency in mangrove, of mangrove in the study area as it tallied 16.91%. This species is higher than in Panabo, Davao del Norte, Banishing Island, Samad, Banibanay, Davao Oriental, Pujada Bay, Mati, and Samar. However, our Mokornata percentage was found lower than in Santa Cruz, Davao del Sur. Next, is Otan, by its local name, is an evergreen tree that grows up to seven meter high and has knee high roots. Leaves were elliptic with acute base and accumulated tips, while it has short cigar like propagules. The stipules are green to yellow green. The calyx colors of B. sexangula are yellow to yellow green, similar to those found in India and Australia. However, at the study site, the calyx has a reddish brown color. Furthermore, the calyx color of B. sexangula was bright red in mangrove individuals found in China. Additionally, 12 by 2.11% of the accounted mangrove individuals are B. sexangula, as it was recorded only in Pindasan. Even so, this number is still relatively higher compared to the documented frequency in Bane Bane Davao Oriental, Condona Island, Surigal del Norte, and Condona Island. But this is lower than the, than the record in the study in Gonzaga, Cagayan. Gonzaga, Cagayan. Soneracha alba. This broad tree is locally known as pagatpat. It can grow to a height of 15 to 20 meters and 20 to 120 centimeters diameter thick. It has thick conical pneumatophores up to one meter tall and has obovate to rounded leaves with round tips. Its fruits are sturdy, round, fleshy berries around three to four centimeters high. Flowers are large, 10 centimeters diameter, with six narrow white petals and often in, inconspicuous with many long white stamens that are pink at the base, forming a powder puff shape. This species is located between exposed sandy beaches, often interspersed with silt and frequently in uncovered bays. Furthermore, this species was found in all the study sites and registered 14.11% of all sampled individuals. This number is comparably higher in both studies conducted in Panabo, Davao del Norte, Banay Banay Davao Oriental, and Banay Banay Davao Oriental, Hagonoy Davao del Sur, and Pujada Bay, Mati Davao Oriental. However, compared to Vanishing Island Samal, Samar, and Santa Cruz Davao del Sur, its frequency is comparably lower. 
Next, Avicenia officinalis, locally known as Bungalon, Api Api, or Miyapi, is an evergreen medium sized mangrove tree species of around 12 meters to 22 meters tall. It has pencil like pneumatophores and light grayish brown bark. Leaves are elliptic to oblong with round apex and acute base arranged in the opposite and decussate manner. An elongated heart shaped fruit with a pointed tip of yellowish to green color. Furthermore, the leaves of this species measure between 8.06 and 9.34 centimeters in length and 4.03 to 5.22 centimeters in width with a dark green upper surface of the leaves while the underside is yellowish green or greenish gray. According to Eunice et al., A. avicenia officinalis generally has thin finger-shaped root and breathed roots wrapped in lenticels, lenticles. The outer bark is smooth with lenticels and varies in color from gray-green to brownish-gray. <clears throat> Moreover, Avicenia officinalis studied a relatively low frequency of 1.23%. This record is slightly higher than the documented study in Banay Banay Davao Oriental and Hagonoy Davao del Sur. But in the study conducted in Samar, Samar Gonzaga, Cagayan, and Mualbuwal, Cebu, it was found to be lower. Avicenia rumpiana, an evergreen medium to large tree locally known as Mungalon, Api Api, or Miyapi, grows up to 30 meters tall. It has pencil like pneumatophores, smooth and dark bark and elliptic leaves with round apex and acute base, and heart-shaped root with round and blood tips. Its inflorescence is spiky, terminal, and axillary. Moreover, Avicenia rumpiana listed as one of the vulnerable species of mangroves based on the IUCN version 2021. This species is found in mid-intertidal to back mangroves, also near upstream estuarine creeks. Moreover, among the four coastal barangays, Avicenia rumpiana was only documented in Barangay San Antonio. It only accounted for 1.02% of the sampled mangrove individuals. This record is lower than Banay Banay Davao Oriental and Santa Cruz Davao del Sur. Consequently, this record Despite being listed as a vulnerable species, Avicenia rumpiana was recorded in numerous areas. This species is found in Katungan, it ay bahay aklan, naawan Misamis Oriental, Manamok Island, Palawan, Zamboanga del Sur, Tangub City, Misamis Occidental, and in Pangasinan, Ma Pangasihan Mangrove Forest Reserve, Misamis Oriental. Next is Acanthus vibractiatus. So this species is locally known as Laguliu or Raguiroi. This ground flora of mangrove has the combent stem that reach up, up to 2 meters tall. Dark shiny green leaves that are serrated, deeply lobed with sharp spines. Its inflorescence is short with white to brownish petals. This species is widespread along the banks of estuaries and lagoons close to the seashore. Furthermore, Acanthus ibraxiatus only tallied 0.87% frequency and were documented only in San Antonio among the selected, selected mangrove communities. This is lower than the documented number in Banay Banay Davao Oriental and Santa Cruz Davao del Sur. Along the Philippine coast, Few areas such as Pangil Bay, Putuan Bay, Agusan del Norte, and Maribuhok Bohol documented numer numerous individuals of this species. This species is usually a single traited variable with the other Acanthaceae 
species often found in the firm mods of the back mangroves. Next is Egeceras cornicolatum. This species is locally known as Saging Saging, Tayokan, and Kawilan in Visayas, well known as Tinduk Tindukan by the Tagalogs. Egeceras cornicolatum grows as a shrub or small tree up to 7 meter high with small surface of ventitus aerial roots. Its leaves are alternate and ovobate with a ground to emarginate apex and acute tips with scented small white umbel flowers of 0.6 to 0.7 centimeter long. The fruit is curved and cylindrical or horn shaped, light green to pink in color. It grows on mud in, in estuaries and tidal creeks, often at the seaward edge of the mangrove zone. Of the surveyed mangrove stands, this species was only recorded in San Antonio and accounted for 0.14% of all the sample mangroves individuals. Subsequently, when this species percentage compared to the fl floristic records in Santa Cruz Davao del Sur, Panaybanay Davao Oriental, Panabo Davao del, Nor del Norte, and Hagunoy Davao del Sur, it is relatively lower. In addition, these species were also recorded in several areas such as Batangas, Panay Island, Bacolod Davo, Lano del Norte, Bohol, and Butuan Bay, Agusan del Norte. And now we're going to talk about the characteristics of each mangrove species identified in Davao de Oro. In this, we're going to talk about the frequency, mean, den mean DBH, the basal area, mean density, relative frequency, relative dominance, relative density, and importance value. We're going to start with frequency of mangrove species in Mabini Davao de Oro. In biodiversity assessment, Frequency indicates the number of times mangrove species was present in the study site and valuable in monitoring the changes in mangrove vegetation over time. Based on the results, our apiculata has the most significant frequency with 94.29%. Our apiculata was the most frequently occurring mangrove species as it appeared 33 times in 35 plots due to its adaptability and ability to grow densely in swamps flooded by normal high tides and on thick, soft, soft mud in estuaries, it is frequently consolidated and protected from surf and current currents by pioneer species Avicenia L and Soneracha L. Our apiculata thrives in per humid environments where it can form nearly pure stands, occasionally combined with Brugera spp or R. mocronata. The data of R. apiculata in Mabini Davao de Oro is greater than the frequency in Manamok Alan Palawan, Zamboanga del Sur, Mindanao Island, Kalatagan Batangas, but little less in Tacloban, Leyte. A. cornicolatum and A. ebracatus, ebracatiatus is said to have the lowest frequency of 2.86%, which is comparably lower than in Pondona Island, Rigao del Norte, Aurora Province, and Calatagan, Batangas. Similarly, B. sexangula with 2.86 frequency, this is way lower than in Gonzaga, Gayan. Maribohok Bohol, and Manamok Island, Palawan. Now, the mean density of mangrove species in Mabini Davao de Oro. The term density refers to the number of individuals of a particular species found inside a given sample unit or research area. It's, it is also used 
in vegetation surveys to describe a species status within a group, within a plant group. Among the eight species in Mabini Davao de Oro, Aura piculata was recorded with the highest mean density with a value of 2,666 2, stems per hectare. This is higher than in Panabo Davao del Norte, Aurora, Aurora Province, Manamok Island, Palawan, and Calatagan, Batangas. Aura piculata's presence tallied throughout the sampled area. This species does not only have broad adaptability in various zones and fast growth rate, but this species also have high recovery rate or resilience level, thus commonly found in mangrove ecosystem rehabilitation programs. Accordingly, this species may be seen from zone near seawater with high salinity to the surrounding area of an estuary it can even find in a watershed with practically fresh salinity. The basal area of mangrove species in Mabini Davao de Oro. The average quantity of an area filled by three stems is referred to as basal area. It is intermediate cross-sectional region of all stems in a stand taken, taken breast height and represented as a unit of land area and a helpful indicator for determining the connections between forest and animal habitats. Among eight species, among eight species solid, Aurapiculata had the largest basal area covered in the sampling site with over 11.72 meters squared per hectare, which is comparably greater than in Banaybanay Davao Oriental. Panabo Davao del Norte and Panabo Davao del Norte, seconded by S. Alba with over 9.55 meters squared per hectare, which is also greater than in Gonzaga, Cagayan and Manamok Island, Palawan. Despite having the second lowest DBH, Arapiculata still has the most significant basal area. Consequently, the basal area is strongly and positively associated with stem density and tree diameter. As reflected in the results, Aura piculata tallied the highest density and relative density of 2,666 stems per hectare and 63.30% respectively. On the other hand, Elledge and Burlow 2010 stated that it could characterize the size of individual trees, of forest stands, and wildlife habitat, making the basal area a critical forest parameter. Relative frequency denotes the ratio of particular mangrove species frequency to the total frequency of all species found in the study site. It further shows the popularity of certain mangrove species based on the population sample. Data obtained reveal that Rhizophora apicolata has the highest relative frequency of 38.82%. This is said to be higher than in Lumagillas Bay, Panabo Davao del Norte, Carmen Davao del Norte, but lower than in Palanan Isabela, Palanan Isabela. Accordingly, Rhizophora apiculata, Rhizophora mucronata, and Soneratia alba are well adapted to the saline, saline and sandy substrates found in the sea environment, as evidenced by the respective relative values. Also, these three species are said to be found most times in the sampling area. Other species low relative frequency at the site is attributed to the substrate characteristics. Most of these species prefer loam and muddy conditions to grow. In biodiversity assessment, the relative density of mangrove vegetation is described as the ratio of three stand species to the total number of three stand species. 
in this study, Isophora apiculata was recorded with the highest relative density value at 63.60%. I mean 63.30%. This is higher than in Condona Island, Surigao del Norte, Imelda Dinagat Island, and out of the eight species with 0.14%, I'm sorry. This is higher than in Condona Island, Surigao del Norte, Imelda Dinagat Island, and Dumaguilias Bay. A. corniculatum got the least relative density out of eight species with 0.14%, thus lower than in Aurora Province, Condona Island, Surigao del Norte, Pangil Bay, Lanao del Norte, Calatagan, Batangas, and Banay Banay Dabo Oriental. The huge relative density of Rhizophora apiculata can be attributed to its species characteristics and morphology. It is a type of mangrove that can grow in practically any soil type, including marshy areas, fresh, brackish, salt flooded water, hydroponics, muck, sand, and the rocky regions. Additionally, this mangrove species frequently grows directly in rivers or seas due to its massive aerial roots. It is not as tolerant of high salinity levels as the red mangrove. Relative dominance is the basal area of specific species expressed as a proportion of the total basal area of all species present. Among the eight species, Rhizophora apiculata was found to dominate the area that tallied the highest relative dominance of 41.97%, which indicates that it accounts for the most significant share of the mangrove biomass throughout the sampling site. This is greater in terms of values in Condona Island, Surigao del Norte, Imelda Dinagat Island, Tagum Davao del Norte, and Samar Leyte. A. corniculatum with 0.12% is the least to have the relative dominance. In congruence, it is also lower compared to Summer Leyte, Calatagan Batangas, Condona Island, Surigao del Norte, and Aurora Province. The dominance of R. apiculata can be linked to its widespread use in the study area and even in the Philippines. However, when the community structure is seen that one species is exceptionally, exceptionally dominant, like in this case, from the station, this represents the spatial distribution being in an unstable state. Thus, the population ex is experiencing ecological stress. The importance value index, which indicates how dominant a species is in a specific environment and the conservation status were used to determine the conservation potential of shade trees. In this study, Rhizophora apiculata was recorded with the highest important value of 144.40%. This further implies that Rhizophora apiculata is the most essential and acclimated mangrove species in Mabini. Compared to Condona Island, Surigao del Norte, Imelda, Dinagat Island, Surigao del Norte, and Aurora Province, it has greater importance. Isegueras corniculatum tallied the lowest important value of 1.43% among the eight species. This data is said to be lower than in Condona Island, Surigao del Norte, Samar, and Aurora Province. This account implies that Rhizophora apiculata has an immense contribution and is the most important mangrove species in Mabini Davao de Oro. Moreover, Yunus et al. 2020 stated that a high importance value index indicates that mangroves have a significant role and function in the ecosystem. Fish, crabs, shrimp, mollocks, and other creatures in this environment rely on mangrove waste for food, as well as the flora for shelter, foraging, and breeding. However, 
the vegetation composition in the four examined places has high homogeneity but low level hetero heterogeneity. According to the examination of the important value index of mango vegetation, having a high hetero heterogeneity or biodiversity in a mango ecosystem is one of the mar markers that it is healthy. So this table presents the results obtained regarding the structural characteristics of mangrove stands in Mabini Davao de Oro. This shows that the mean DBH of the mangrove individuals in the coastal areas of Mabini Davao de Oro is 10.96 cm with a range of 10.53 cm to 11.39 cm. The mean DBH of the mangrove stands in Mabini Davao de Oro indicate that it is donated by medium trees, which measures from 5 cm to 15 cm. The mean DBH of mangroves can also indicate the maturity of mangrove forest. Consequently, the results also suggest that the mangrove stands in Mabini Davao de Oro are younger than the mangrove stands in Banebanay Davao Oriental, but are more mature than the mangrove stands in Panabo Davao del Norte. Furthermore, Avicenia Rompiana tallied the highest mean DBH of 8.21 cm, ranging from 9.49 to 19.96 cm, which is much lesser compared to the tallied mangrove average DBH in Banebanay Davao Oriental, which reached its mean DBH for about 26 cm wide. And 22.7 cm mean DBH in Bohol. A Vesenia officinalis thus tallied the second highest mean DBH of 17.51 cm, which is higher than the 14.4 cm taken in Bohol and around 11 cm in Banebanay Davao Oriental. So the results in Mabini Davao de Oro revealed that the overall basal area of 27.93 meters squared per hectare, which is greater compared to the basal area in Bohol of Lango Wildlife Sanctuary Cebu and Batangas. However, it is lesser compared to Dinagat Island. Furthermore, the neighboring coastal areas along the Davao Gulf have lower basal areas than Mabini Davao de Oro. In Panavo Double del Norte, the basal area of mangrove stands is 14.65 meters squared per hectare, which is lower, which is a lower value than the value obtained in Mabini. This is because the low DBH obtained in the area. The DBH of the mangrove and the density of the stands are factors that may affect the basal area of mangrove stands. This is also indicates that although having a higher mean DBH, the basal area of Banay Banay Davao Oriental ranging from 0 0.01 to 3.25 meters square per hectare is still lower compared to Mabini Davao de Oro. This is due to the high number of stems per hectare or the density of mangrove stands in Mabini. The overall mean density of mangroves resulted in 4,192 stems per hectare, which is lower value compared to the mean density tallied in Panabo Davao del Norte. Panabo Davao del Norte. Moreover, greater compared to the mean density tallied in Banay Banay Davao Oriental and Bohol. Mangroves went through evolution to adapt to the harsh and stressful environment. Mangroves de had developed special features to survive in these conditions. They developed a well-organized salt filtration system and complex root system to cope with the saltwater environment and wave action and adapted to tidal mudflats anoxic, anoxic condition. They also developed a method of reproduction that mainly influenced the distribution of its seedling. The high density of the mangrove Mangrove stands suggest that the coastal area of Mabini Davao de Oro provide a suitable environment for mangroves to flourish. 
species diversity. The overall species diversity, a species biodiversity in the study area revealed a very low diversity index of 1.098, this is according to Shannon Wainer's index. Based on diversity classification of Fernando 1988, low biodiversity in the study site indicates that the mangrove ecosystem might be in distress that requires additional repair, preservation, and conservation efforts, and might be due to the low mortality rate of mangrove saplings. Species evidence. The results yielded the species evidence ev evenness of 0 0.5280 of mangrove stands in Mabini Davao de Oro using Palos index. The numbers of species and their relative abundance are the factors that affect species evenness in a community. It was found out that the species evenness has a positive impact on the functioning of an ecosystem. Thus, high species evenness indicates a high functioning ecosystem. This further implies that the mangrove ecosystem in Mabini Davao de Oro can function more effectively if the value of species evenness is higher. Species richness. Data gathered further reveal the overall species, species richness of 0 0.9601 by the use of Margalef's index, which is greater compared to the species richness of Panabo Dabao Davao del Norte, a study disclosed that the, that the decrease in the mangrove species, mangrove forest adversely affects biodiversity and ecosystem functioning. Species richness, like the species evidence, play a great influence on the services offered by an ecosystem. Now we will proceed to the third and last, or the results and discussion of the third and last objective of this study, which is to determine the perceived ecosystem services of the local residents in Mabini Davao de Oro. <clears throat> there were five major themes emerged from the data analysis collected from the experiences of the study participants based on their perception of mangrove ecosystem services. First is it is rich in marine life diversity. As the result of this study revealed, many participants observed that mangrove areas are the site for marine diversity, or it can be said that mangrove areas are rich in marine life diversity. In connection, Hawaii 2019 stated that mangrove estuaries are home to the diverse marine interaction where, there's, where they serve as a habitat of numerous marine species such as fish, crab, shrimp, and mollusk due to the food and shelter accessibility offered by mangroves. Adding a pseudonym explained how mangroves support marine biodiversity. He added that areas devoid of ecosystems have biodiversity, but not as much as mangroves, supported by Drew Soft 2013, stating that mangroves also provide habitat opportunity and sustainable settings in many various kinds of marine fauna and flora. Second, nurseries of the aquatic life. Moreover, Many of their responses are pointing towards mangroves as nurseries of aquatic life as it acts as the breeding ground of many marine species. KD, a pseudonym, shared that there really is a characteristic of a mangrove that enables it to become a shelter for marine species such as small fishes. To add, Melody, a pseudonym, shared the possible effect of not having or having mangroves but in the lesser count. For her, it would be a great loss as fishes have a very limited area to hatch eggs and breed. 
On a similar note, a study conducted by Mumbi et al. 2016, it was found that there are upwards of multiple times more fish of certain species and reefs near mangrove zones than in regions where mangroves have been shot down. Third, it provides livelihood to the fishermen or residents. Residents of nearby mangrove areas find fishing as their primary source of income. In Unity, Manny, Francis, and Kiss, pseudonyms, shared a common idea on how mangroves can help their residents provide them resources for their livelihood. Moreover, fish production increases multiple times in healthy mangrove areas compared to regions with chopped down mangroves according to Mumbi et al. 2016. As mentioned in the study of Sharma 2018 and Hawaii 2019, mangroves provide financial and security advantages to its nearby local community, either from common fish stock or from aquaculture. Moreover, fish production increases multiple times in healthy, area, healthy mangrove areas compared to regions with chop down mangroves. Third, fourth, protects from possible erosion. The local respondents have perceived that the mangroves firmly hold the ground and help in stabilizing the shoreline. Restoration of mangrove forests along the coastline can help counter coastal erosion. Moreover, mangroves carried out various inundation control protection from erosion, storm, and flood. Maria, a pseudonym, then compared the shorelines with and without mangroves in terms of soil erosion and noted that having mangroves in the area is advantageous. Indirectly, mangroves root networks adjust and stabilize the coastal soil. On a similar note, a study showed that restoration of mangrove forests along the coastline could help encounter coastal erosion. Lastly, <clears throat> but it protects for adverse effects of typhoon. The majority of the respondents have mentioned that mangroves protect the coastal areas from the risks of storm surge and tidal waves and the prevention of mangroves from the strong sea breeze. Mangroves have proven to have resilience and reduce the adverse effect of various coastal disturbances. Melody and Jamie pseudonyms stated that areas with mangroves have lesser risk during strong surges as the roots hold the soil tightly and buffer the strength of waves and tides compared in the study on, so on sites present and absent from the mangroves community. Mangroves also reduce the damages caused by coastal disturbances such as storms to the local communities and their properties. Based on the findings of the study, conclusions are drawn in this section. So the selected mangrove communities in Mabini, Davao de Oro, Philippines have eight mangrove, ecos mangrove species. These species are Rhizophora apiculata, Rhizophora mocronata, Brigera sexuangula, Sonaratia alba, Avicennia officinalis, Avicennia rompeana, Acanthus ibracteatus, and Egeceras corniculatum. Of the identified species, Rhizophora apicolata tallied the highest in terms in frequency, mean density, basal area, relative frequency, relative dominance, and important value index, while Avicenia rompiana measured the highest mean BBH. Among the four selected barangays, San Antonio recorded the highest basal area while Pindasan recorded the highest mean density. Overall, the selected mangrove communities in Mabini, Davao de Oro have very low species diversity, low species richness, and less even species distribution. Furthermore, the majority of the respondents 
have acknowledged several ecosystem services offered by mangroves. Five essential themes are emerged from the local community's perception regarding mangrove ecosystem services. These themes are, are as follows. Niche in marine life diversity, nurseries of aquatic life, provides livelihood to the fishermen, protects from possible erosion, and protects from adverse effect of the typhoon. In the initial findings and conclusion, we present here with the following recommendation. It was found that the selected mangrove communities of Magbini Davao de Oro host a rompiana, which, or Avicenia rompiana, which is identified as vulnerable species. And unto this, a continued strict conservation and protection protection efforts in the area should be carried should be carried out to improve the survival rate of the vulnerable species. Activities such as enrichment planting using the said species are recommended to improve the species population size. However, a baseline suitability study should be conducted first to ensure the appropriate species planted in the area. In addition, the researchers suggest that periodic monitoring of biodiversity status of mangroves of Mabini Davao de Oro shall be conducted. Also, the conduct of baseline study of mangrove floristics on areas not included in this study, like in Kadunan, Tagnanan, Lunud Island, and Kopiat Island is recommended. This will help strengthen the management plans of Mabini protected landscape and seascape to direct further initiatives for the protection and optimal utilization of benefits that the mangrove ecosystem potentially offers. Furthermore, the interviewed residents acknowledge the ecosystem services provided by mangroves. However, their perceived ecosystem services are limited only to a few provisioning, regulating, and supporting ecosystem services. In line with this, management initiatives on information, education, and communication with the help of authorities are recommended to widen the local community's awareness and perception about the mangrove ecosystem services, mainly the cultural, cultural services. Awareness of these Values will allow the locals to carry out the roles in preserving and protected, preserving the protected mangroves ecosystem in the area, which will lead to sustainable use of the flora and fauna resources in the said ecosystem. More specifically, an information campaign to be facilitated by authorities such as higher education institutions, local government units, through the Community Environment and Natural Resources Office and the Protected Area Management Board should be done to raise awareness of the local stakeholders of the varied services provided by the mangrove ecosystem. Lastly, the researchers recommend that future studies explore other aspects of mangrove ecology, such as assessing the fish, the physical chemical factors and their relationship to mangrove spatial distribution, estimating the carbon sequestration potential, valuation of mangrove ecosystem services, and assessing the mangrove associated fauna. Further, the researchers recommend that a quantitative approach be carried out to assess the local perceptions and utilization of mangroves and their ecosystem services. An in-depth analysis of the mangrove management practices could also be conducted. All this information is equally helpful in the proper management and conservation of mangroves in Mabini Davao de Oro. That would be all for this video presentation. Thank you and to God be all the glory. <laughs>